Hello everybody, my name is Luke Mar, and this is Hot Mode. and today on Hot Mode, unfortunately, we have to do the roast of the Met Gala 2018 red carpet. Honestly, I was kind of shocked. I literally thought that like this was a really big prank that was like one month and six days late from like April Fools. But when I realized two hours after the red carpet started that nobody was gonna re-show up in like better looks, that we just kind of had to deal with it. So the theme this year was heavenly bodies, fashion and the Catholic imagination. That is pretty important to the idea of the red carpet because usually the celebrities and brands are asked to interpret the theme and present a good look on the red carpet. Most people didn't do that at all. I'm excited. I'm gonna let out all of my rage and all of my pent up anger now. Before we get into the actual video though, if you guys are looking for a channel that talks about fashion in the most fun, sassy, bitchy, analytical way, this is it. So you can go like down below, hit the subscribe button, and turn on my post notifications. What do you have to lose? Also, if you guys like these Met Gala roast reviews, definitely give it a like. It lets me know. And also, if you guys want to see more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at HotLamode. So as I said, the theme for this year was Heavenly Bodies, Fashion, and the Catholic Imagination. So essentially, all anybody had to do was like look at like an interesting like Christian portrait or like maybe, I don't know, look at a line from the Bible and like, you know, make something interesting. Like all anybody had to do was like take their design aesthetic and like take the theme and like mash it together. After last year's Ray Kawakubo disaster, I thought, okay, like this year's theme is really easy. Like everybody can just like kill it. Like. You know, it's Christian, it's fine, everybody knows what Christianity is, nobody knows what Rei Kubo is, even though Rei Kubo essentially created the universe. So yeah, I was kind of excited. I was like, you know what? I can't wait. Everybody's gonna look really good. I'm so excited. And somehow they all fucked it up. Like, it wasn't hard. Like, honestly, I could turn out a fucking Jesus look and I haven't been to church in a long time. Another thing before we get into the review, there are like four categories that went down last night. There were people that looked great and followed the theme, and those people I love. There were people that followed the theme and looked awful, those people I did not love. There were those people that did not follow the theme and looked great, which I loved. And there were people that did not follow the theme and looked awful. So yeah, like, just keep that in mind. Some people didn't follow the theme, but I was like, yes, this is a look, this is great, whatever, I'm into this. There's some people that like, follow the theme, and I was just like, what the fuck is that? And now let's get started. First up is Anna Wintour. She is essentially the Pope, the high priestess of fashion. So like, if Anna wasn't turning a look, we were gonna be upset. She always wears Chanel Haute Couture every single Met Gala, which she is the chair of. She looks great. I love the high collar on her. It's not boring. It actually has like an interesting little design. I love the little cutouts on her shoulders. I think they're really beautiful. I could do without the cross, but you know what? It kind of helps to tie it all together. I don't really love the tool overlay, but again, give her an angel vibe. Who knows? I kind of wish she had worn like red or black because it would have like played into like the Anna is also a devil vibe. But you know what? I will take this look gladly. Thank you, Anna. Next up is Amal Clooney, who was one of the co-chairs of the night. She's wearing Richard Quinn. Let me just say that this is a fucking awful look. Like she didn't follow the theme, nor did she like actually choose to look good. Richard Quinn, I actually think is a semi good designer. I just don't think that any of his shit will ever, ever sell in a store. This is a great example of that. So the top, like where are these flowers coming from? Like who, who said, oh yeah, it's the floral Met Gala this year. Like, no, it's not. And then we get the pants, like a navy pant. What, what is that supposed to do for me? And then we get this long ass train full of roses and like a teal. No, like, no, like, what? And then George Clooney's like looking at her and he's like, she looks like shit, look. Like, that's me, I'm proud of George. George has taste, he knows, she knows she looks awful. Honestly, if you wanted to go for a floral moment and like the whole Catholicism thing, there was that guy that like picked up all the roses in his poncho and like dropped them off and then like Mary's face was in it. Like, we could have had that moment. Like, we could have had so many creative moments here, but like, he chose that to do. Okay. Next up is Rita Ora and Prada. Can anybody tell me why she was invited again? 
and again and again. She's always invited to everything and I really can't understand why I'd rather somebody invited a pole or a broom or a cactus. She's wearing Prada, so yeah, I'm upset. Like she's trying to have a long train moment and let me just say, bitch, you will never be Rihanna, so just letting you know. Again, the Prada is just kind of boring. Like, Muchir Prada has actually like looked at Catholicism and like Christian orders and like done fashion shows and like fashion looks about it. So like, this is kind of shocking to me that we're getting like black with some neon embroidery. Muchi, are you okay, bitch? I know that resort collection was like a great moment, but like, you okay? You need some help? Need me to come over? Meals on wheels? Like, what's up? What do you need? Next up is B. Schaefer, who's wearing Maze and Valentino. Pier Paolo, we should, we should do better than this. Like, this is a hot mess. She looks like she was a prostitute that got her shit torn up when she was leaving church with her little Bible bag. It's a mess. I don't like the one shoulder. I don't like the tie on the other shoulder. I don't like the scalloped layering of the fabric. And I especially hate that fucking bag. Like, she literally is Anna Wintour's daughter and like, this is what we come up with. Like, a fucking bag with a cross on it. Like that, that's what we come up, like that's what we're doing. Okay. Next up is Donatella Versace and honestly I think Donatella actually looks really good. The cocktail dress, very Donatella, very her, I like it. I actually like the train because it's not like a long train, it's a train that actually branches out and it makes her hips look bigger, which is great because it's not fucking basic. Like she's actually like looking at different styles of how to dress, not just a long fucking train. I also like the boots. I think they're solid. And uh, the fishnet stockings could go. But besides that, honestly, I'm kind of into this. Like, uh, I'll take this. This is what I can get. And considering Donatella is one of the chairs, she's one of the best looking ones. So next up is Amanda Siegfried, Seyfried, I don't know. I don't really care. She's wearing yellow with some like gold leafing on it. Bitch, when did you hear that the fucking theme was primary colors? Cause it's not. Honestly, if you're gonna wear boring dresses, just go in the back. Like, don't waste my time. Don't waste the digital photographer's times. Like, don't waste Vogue's time. Don't waste any of our times. Just go in the back. Like, you don't have to, you don't have to do the red carpet. Nobody's forcing you. Nobody's holding a gold leaf covered gun to your head. Go in the back. Next up is Lily Collins and thank Christ, thank Madonna, thank whoever. Well, actually we should be thanking Claire Wright Geller because this is Givon She. She looks amazing. She's giving you gothic Madonna. I mean, the makeup is surreal. It's beautiful. And the dress is wonderful. I love the structure off the shoulder, little triangle dip. I love the little shorts and I especially love the tool. It's interesting. It's a different look. It's not run of the mill. It's actually like cool and well thought out. And it might not be the most Catholic thing that you've ever seen, but like nobody's saying it has to be. You don't have to throw crosses on everything. It could be a little bit subversive. It could be a little bit, I don't know, referential to anything besides Jesus Christ, Mary, or a cross. Overall, I love this look. It's simple, it's referential, and not to just something basic like Jesus on a gold cross. It's lovely. Thank you, Lily Collins. We don't deserve you. The other amazing part of this photo is Muchia Prada in a full neon fringe look in the background. Like, we don't deserve her. Next up is Kate Moss and Saint Laurent. Honestly, like, the majority of the Saint Laurent models wore off the runway looks and like not even the good ones from that spring show, like the ones with like the big feathers or anything like that. Like, eh, this is just boring. Like Kate Moss, obviously she's great, she's Kate Moss, but like Anthony, it's called custom. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but like you should maybe look it up. Next up is Bella Hadid. She's wearing Gareth Pugh X Chrome Hearts. Honestly, I appreciate that this is an archival look, but I think Bella could have done a little bit better. I know that she probably is working with Chrome Hearts or whatever, but like she could have wore a shit ton of like amazing Chrome Hearts extravagant jewelry and like a Gareth Pugh look that is crazy amazing. This one is not that. Like the leather and print in the back of this look is like cool and like the train is like 
whatever. I'm so over trains. Like, I'm so over trains at the Met Gala. It's actually sad. So yeah, Bella, I love you. Angel, do better. Next up is Migos. They're wearing Versace. I really couldn't tell if it was Versace or Dolce & Gabbana, which I find to be a really big problem. Yeah, like the blazer is fine. All the jewelry, fine. Like, you know, whatever. Next up is Katherine Langford and she's wearing Prada. And honestly, I'm disappointed. Like this is the second Prada look where I'm like, ow. It's just a boring dress. Like it's a boring red dress and like a whatever fabric with like a pink embroidered cape. Like, Uchia, you could do so much better than this. Like I'm really actually disappointed and upset and hurt by this. Like I thought we were friends. I thought we liked each other. I thought we had a real mutual love. Why are you doing this to me? And also, why Katherine Langford? 13 reasons why. You're gonna be on a tape, Muchia. You're gonna be on a tape. Next up is Zoe Kravitz. And honestly, this is a custom Saint Laurent look, thank God. I love this. I think it's really beautiful. Zoe Kravitz always kind of turns a look. This is very simple for Zoe, but I like the black lace. And like, it's not on a train. It's like beautifully just kind of fitted and draped around her body. You can see a whole lot of thigh. I like it. As long as it's not a train, I'm happy. Like, I just can't do with the train right now. Next up is SZA and Versace. I don't know if this is Atelier Versace. The thing is, I love SZA. I think she's miraculous. I don't live for this though. The headpiece is a bit meh in my opinion. The bustier could be a lot better. I don't really love the whole light pink embroidered in gold Versace. Like. Okay. The thing about the tool is I don't love the normal tool. I actually like the way that the tool is bunched around her hips. I actually think it gives it a little bit of character. It's not just boring and basic. I'm not a gigantic fan, but I can see that there's a little bit of design aesthetic in there. So I'll take what I can get. Next up is Kerry Washington. And honestly, I don't even know what to say about this. Cause like, is this a call for help? Does Carrie need help? Like somebody get her a stylist or somebody that likes her or you know, like a fan or two. Cause she needs help. Like what is this gold shit? Like that, I don't even know what to say really. It's just like sad. Like we need to pray for Carrie Washington. Okay, pray for her. Next up is Ashley Graham. She's wearing probable wrong. I actually think she looks really beautiful. I just hate the dress. Like it's a sequined gold, bronze dress. Like probable, that's that's what we're doing. That's it. This is what this is what we get. This is it. Okay, like it's just fucking boring. Like I'm just bored of it. Like I'm gonna fall asleep. I'm tired. I need to go. Like burn it. I'm ugh. Next up is Mindy Kaling and honestly Mindy Kaling's face is me the entirety of the Met Gala. Like I'm just like So the crown no. The gloves, a definite no. And that dress. What? It's not designed by a designer that I know. Like I looked at her name and I was like, can't even pronounce that. And not in a good way. Overall, it's just like a bad look. Like, just get her something interesting. She deserves better. Mindy Kaling's a nice person. She wants to look good. This is not making her look good. Next up is Re. And here's the thing about Rihanna. I was not impressed by this look. Like it honestly just was not something that I thought, wow, like this is really amazing. I just kind of saw it and was like, oh. I think that because Rihanna has single-handedly carried like 17 different Met Gala red carpets that we're kind of always putting this really harsh like expectations of Rihanna to like turn it the fuck out. And mind you, She's wearing John Galliano, and I thought that the Rihanna and John Galliano collab would be the collab of the century. I thought, honestly, earthquakes were gonna happen. I thought that people were gonna be brought up into heaven. I just thought it was the rapture. I thought the rapture was going to happen. And unfortunately, the rapture didn't happen because I'm still here and I still have to endure this. But let's talk about the look. It is Mesa Martin Margiela by John Galliano. It is inspired by John Galliano's Dior Couture Pope look. And the thing is, the embroidery is beautiful. Is the execution there? Yes. It feels kind of costumey. I'll, I'll, I'll be the first one to say it. It does feel like, oh, Pope costume. Like, 
that's not really the vibe. The vibe is to give us like a zhuzh, like something that we really, really want. And I think that Rihanna as the co-chair, also we have a higher expectation for her. I'm not mad at Rihanna at all. I still think she's wonderful. I still think she's a style icon and I still think she is a goddess. But you know what? Every now and then she is kind enough and gracious enough to let some others shine. So Re, we love you. Can't wait for next year when you fucking kill it. This year, we, we understand. You needed a little vacay. You did it. You came. You saw. You got all the people to recognize that you conquered except for me. So yeah, love you Re, but like next year, bring it back. Next up is Diane Kruger and honestly, I want to like this look, but like again, I see a train and I'm like, skirt skirt. Um, I'm good. Like, thank you, love you, appreciate you, but like, no. I love the idea of the whole little blue bell of the ball dress, but like besides that, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. I'll pass. Next up is Dots and Crows, and I don't even know if I said her name right. I don't really care. She's wearing C's Marion. Honestly, I know this is another controversial opinion, but I like this look. I thought that the C's Marion aesthetic was played in really, really well with the whole Mary shrouded head look. Am I saying it was the best Met Gala look that I've ever seen in my entire life? Absolutely not. I think this was the perfect mixture of C's Marion's brand aesthetic and the theme of the gala. Like, they just kind of came together. It was great, it was fine, it worked. I'm very happy to see a really, really young New York brand on the red carpet at the Met Gala, so I'm supporting. Next up is Lena Waithe. So she wore this like full rainbow cape. Now, I appreciate the message behind it. I love what she's doing. I love that there are black and brown stripes on the flag. I love that, I'm living. But I also think that I would prefer that if somebody's gonna do some queer representation, it was a little bit more referential. It wasn't just like, bam, rainbow flag. Like I'm all for like my pride living great, but that's next month. Let's like do a really great referential look. Like give me a really amazing queer Christian that we know about, you know? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like just give me something a little bit more interesting, something a little bit referential. Just not like the rainbow flag. Cause like then it's just, oh, rainbow flag, gay. And like, I'm all for like gay, but like not when it's just gay, you know, you feel me? Next up is Kris Jenner. Every single human person on this planet, all 8 billion of us is momager. Like Chris, I love you. You're wearing Tommy Hilfiger. First issue that I have there. Also B, I genuinely, thought that this was Givenchy for like mad long and then they were like, it's Tommy Hilfiger and I was like, skirt skirt, what do you mean? Like, yeah, Catholicism is like the ethnic Christianity and like waspy Christian Protestant shit is like over there and that's Tommy Hilfiger's crew. So like, show me where they connect. And just this look, like if you honestly think that this would ever come down to Tommy Hilfiger runway, you're fucking nuts, you're crazy. Like get, no, absolutely not. Chris, I love you, just, Find somebody that cares about you because like, this is not caring. This is not self-care. This is not self-health. This is, this is not. We need an intervention because Chris needs to stop wearing bad Met Gala looks. But I love you, Chris. I love you so much. Next up is Rosie Huntington Whiteley. And here's the thing about Rosie Huntington Whiteley. Very rarely am I like, okay, it's basic, it's simple, but like beautiful. I'm very harsh usually, but like, I don't know why, but she looks like she was in like a Christian, beautiful Catholic painting. Like the headpiece is amazing. Her dress is really angelic. Like her highlight is just there. So she looks really great. I'm like obsessed and amazed and it's beautiful. And you know what? I don't care. Next up is Ruby Rose. Here's the thing. I appreciate the trying to fit the theme. The thing is your little Christian priest sash looks like you got it from Joanne Fabrics. It looks like it's from a Catholic school play and like somebody's playing the priest. Overall, let's just not do whatever this is. Next up is Frances McDermott in a full Valentino runway couture piece. And honestly, this is not fitting into the theme at all. And I don't care because it's amazing. Like if you have the balls to wear those Valentino headpieces out and about, you win, like you won, you're you're there, you you did it. You're good, you're solid, thank you, I love you. Also, have you seen those pictures of her smoking the cigarettes outside? Like, me, literally me. Next up is Rooney Mara, or 
Mara Rooney, I don't know. But she is wearing Givenchy, and honestly, another fucking banger for Claire Wright Geller. It's beautiful, it's amazing. I don't know if there's any like actual Catholic kind of inspiration here, but it looks very like rigid and Catholic and amazing, and the waist is snatched, and the dress is just beautiful, and like I love her shoulders. There's, it's all there, it's good, it's solid, I love this. Claire, keep it coming, I'm proud of you. This is what we've been looking for, you're killing it. You're doing amazing, sweetie. Next up is Taylor Hill in DVF, and honestly, I'm kind of shocked by this look. I have to say, I think had they gotten rid of that cross over the look, I actually think it would have been much better. I just feel like the cross is like, bam, Catholic, bam, a priest. And I'm like, okay, I got it, thanks. I do really think this is a great interpretation of like, priestly looks, but turned into like a sexy slutty dress. I'm very into that. I love the red piping. I think it really like actually is very DVF and really is solid and simple and cute. The only thing that I do not love is the cross. Like everything else, beautiful, love it. Get rid of that cross. So next up is Ariana Grande and she is wearing Vera Wang. The thing is she's wearing the Sistine Chapel screen printed on a dress. I just feel like it's very obvious. Like, okay, like great, you follow the theme, like check. But sometimes you follow the theme, but it doesn't mean it like looks good. It doesn't mean it's like great. I don't know, it's it's not that hard to like, you know, be interesting. And Vera Wang lately has been like killing it. So I feel like this is very far from like what Vera has been doing recently. It just feels like all over the place and I don't love that. Next up is Jordan Dunn in DVF. And honestly, I don't know if this follows the theme at all, but like, I love it. I think she looks amazing. Her hair is fantastic. I love the dress. I love the panels. I love the arm panels. I think it's really beautiful. I think she killed it. I'm very proud. Get it, Jordan. Next up is Katy Perry. I think she's wearing Versace. I don't really know, but like, what the fuck is this? Like, girl, don't literally fucking be like, I'm gonna be an angel. Like, we're good. Like, we don't need any more Victoria's Secret Angels. Like, you didn't get through to the second interview. Thank you. She's like the angel of death. Like, she's coming to fucking kill you if you haven't marked your fucking door with lamb's blood. Like, like you just look obnoxious. You look like you're trying so hard and like, that's not a cute look. Like, nobody wants to like, actually look like they're trying mad hard. You're trying so hard. The dress is boring. And the boots, like Party City called, they said, hi, can you like take those off? We don't want those in any press junkets and we don't want it attached to our name. Just like, you know, Katy Perry, Fuck off, thanks. Next up is Sarah Jessica Parker. Again, why do we invite these people? Like, Sex in the City was literally millions of years ago and like the 30 year old fucking white gays could like fuck off, I don't care. She just looks stupid. She's wearing Dolce & Gabbana, so like that's the first strike. The second strike is like, she wears an awful headpiece every single year. This one has the nativity scene like on her head and like honestly, I'm good. Like I see that enough at Christmas, I don't need to see it right now. And like the hearts, like, oh wow, like heart. Like it's not even like the sacred heart. It's just like an emoji heart. Like give me some sort of reference. Like it's just fucking boring. Like. Next up is Carly Kloss and Brandon Maxwell. Honestly, I like this look. I just think it's simple. I think it's good. I don't feel like Carly ever follows the theme, but like somehow I always think she looks like semi-decent. Next up is Greta Gerwig in the row. And honestly, I'm shook it. She looks like the actual Pope. Like she looks like a Pope. It's great. It's not fake. It's nice. It's simple. It follows the theme. You're getting that like avant-garde, gigantic Pope, priest, cardinal vibe and I love it. Next up is Irina Shank in Versace. I kind of like the train a little bit, like those golden feathers, like I'm kind of feeling it, sort of, sort of, I don't know. So the golden pleated stuff coming out of her vagina, I'm kind of into it. I like kind of like it. I don't really love the body part. Like I get it, golden crested, blah, blah, blah. But like, yeah, like the the pleats are like, okay, but like everything else is kind of like a no, you know, it's a no okay. Next up is Emma Stone and Nicola Jesquier and she's wearing Louis Vuitton and it's a hot mess. Like literally Nicola just took all of his fall collection pieces and just like made them all super long. And like 
girl, you're in the Navy. I can't understand what's happening. Are you an admiral? I don't know. Like, girl, just jump off the ship. SOS. Get yourself out of there. It's just a mess. Like, I don't know what even to say. Like, get her some help. Get her away from Nicola. It's not working. On the other hand, Alicia Vikander looks fucking phenomenal. I'm in love with the shoulders. Like, they're beautiful, they're amazing. And then the way that they lead into the rest of the dress. Like, I don't know what's happening with the rest of the dress. All I know is I love it and I love the gloves. Like, it's very papal, it's very good, it's very what I needed today. Next up is one of the other Louis Vuitton brand ambassadors and she looks like a hot mess. I don't know what to do with these poor Louis Vuitton people because like they don't deserve this. They seem like nice people, you know? Like why are we doing this to them? What is wrong? Why is it that every single time Louis Vuitton has to do a red carpet, it's like a fucking gigantic car fire? Like why is it such a bad experience for everybody involved? Next up is Jaden Smith and Louis Vuitton and honestly he just seems like a twat. Like I get last year the braids, cool, like amazing. You didn't have to bring your record because like nobody gives a shit. Like you're on the red carpet with literally all accomplished celebrities. Like who are you trying to impress? You're Will Smith's son, not much else. Just saying, like I don't understand. Like what? So honestly, Jaden, you look great. You're not on theme, but like, could you not be a dick? Like that would be really helpful, thanks. Next up is Priyanka Chopra. Honestly, I'm kind of into this look. I kind of dig it. I will deal with it. I like the red velvet because it reminds me of when I used to go to confession and they used to have these plush little red seats that you used to sit on while you told the priest things that were wrong but weren't really wrong. Also, I kind of fuck with the gold headpiece, sort of, kind of. Yeah, overall, it's fine. I shall deal with it. Next up is Kendall Jenner. Um, yeah, this off-white look is a no. Like, what is happening? There's no, like, reference. There's just, like, some weird f shit following her feet. Like, I just don't understand. Like, there's weird tool gloves and, like, I don't know what's happening. I need to know. Like, why did Virgil dress her like this? Like, since when is this off-white? Like, why didn't Virgil, like, do something interesting? Like, his last collection was all tapestry-inspired, so, like, why wouldn't he do something with tapestries? Why did he do this? Why did he do this? I don't understand. Somebody tell me, please. Next up is Miley Cyrus, and honestly, I don't really know why she's there. Like, you're not following the theme. You don't really look good in Stella McCartney. So like, somebody let me know. Like, what's the point? Why are you there? Like, I, I don't know anymore. Like, what is the point? Next up is Jennifer Conley and Louis Vuitton, and like, again, like, what the fuck is happening? Like, there's some weird silver shit. That was two years ago. Like, you missed Mono Sex Machina. Then there's like some weird athletic shit on the top. And then you get like, embroidered plaid. Like, what is happening? Like, what are we doing? Like, please let me know. Next up is Virgil Abloh, and honestly, he's wearing like Louis Vuitton that he designed. Great, but like, uninspired, boring, I'm tired. I mean, the hype beast I'm sure will live and die and, you know, commit suicide about it, but unimpressed, like, Maybe people are right about that Louis Vuitton appointment. Next up is Janelle Monet, and this is another really amazing example of a brand mixing its aesthetic and its collections with the theme. She's wearing Marc Jacobs. So the Marc Jacobs fall show was all these gigantic 80s couture French silhouettes. It was amazing, it was beautiful. It was 80s, it was ridiculous. And they had these gigantic hats. So what Marc Jacobs did in his brilliance was on the underside of the brim of the hat, he shrouded the brim in gold, which is amazing because it's a reference to the halo in a lot of Catholic paintings. And then he mixed a full 80s couture moment into a dress with a gigantic cape and it was great and I loved it. This is how you do it. Like, it's not that hard. You just have to mix your brand aesthetic with the theme. It's not difficult. We're not asking that much. It doesn't take all that much work. That's it. This is a perfect example. Like, you don't have to do anything else. You just have to do this. Like, please let me know how this is so hard for all of you. Please. Next up is JLo in Belmont. Honestly, this could have been great, except for the fact that there's a gigantic plume of ostrich feathers flying off of JLo's body. Like, 
The dress would have been amazing had it been Olivier's whole beautiful, sexy Balmain moment, but like with, you know, some Catholic negligee, some Catholic inspiration, it would have been great. But like, no, we have to ruin it by like trying to be ridiculous with all this feathers and shit. Like, why do we need that? Like, we don't need that. It's not necessary. We're good. Like, just stick to the theme. Don't be crazy. Do what you do and do it good. Like, nobody's asking for anything else. Like, it's not that hard. I really can't understand. <sighs> Next up is P. Diddy and Cassie. Diddy looks great. Take off that one Michael Jackson glove and you're solid. But Cassie is wearing Tom Brown. She looks amazing in this tuxedo suit. This is an example of you're not doing the theme, but you look great. It's amazing, whatever. I love it. Like, this is great. I don't care. It's a tuxedo. She looks amazing. The shoes are on point. It's all good. I'm here for it. Next up is Stella Maxwell in Moschino. Here's the thing about this Jeremy Scott dress. People are like, oh my God, she's so beautiful. Like, oh my God, this dress is amazing. No, it's not. It's literally fucking Photoshop Madonna pictures on a fucking dress. Like, is that really what you're impressed by? Because honestly, we need to work on standards then. There is nothing special about this dress. It literally is boring, it's tacky. And you know what, I could do it. I honestly am not that great at Photoshop, but I could do that. Like I could take the fucking pictures, edit them, make it work. Like it's not that hard. So let's stop giving mediocrity a real, real good name. Thanks. <sighs> Next up is Selma Hayek. She's wearing Alta Zara. I don't really know what the inspiration behind this is. I assume it's the Garden of Eden. If so, I'd love to have seen like a nude Adam and Eve. Cause that would, I don't know, like made it happen. But all I can assume is this weird digital forest is the Garden of Eden. And honestly, I don't think she knows what's going on. I don't think Joseph Altazar knows what's going on. I don't think anybody knows what's going on. But this is also a little interesting thing. Normally she wears all Caring brands. So like, does that mean that Joseph Altazar is being bought by Caring? Questions, questions to ask yourself. Next up is Yara Shahidi. She's wearing Chanel. I love this. It's great. It's beautiful, she looks amazing. It's not on theme at all, but I like it. It's good, it's solid, I don't care. I, I, I'm really working with not that much here, so we're taking what we can get. Next up is Selena Gomez and Coach, and honestly, I don't understand why this is a thing. Like, Stuart, it's not that hard to like, I don't know, be on theme. You do this every single Met Gala, like it's a boring ass dress that does not correlate to the theme at all, and you're just like, in every photo, like, why are you smiling? Why are you happy? We shouldn't be this way. Like, you literally refuse to do the theme every single year. Like, why? Selena Gomez, I'm sorry. She doesn't look good. Like, the dress doesn't look good, but the hair and the makeup, and you know, I'm not a hair and makeup kind of person, but I can see when it's not all that great. The dress is just bad. Like, there are like two lumps of fabric covering her boobs, and then it's like a weird sheer with a gigantic train. Like. Why? Like, why? What is the reasoning? What is the, like, why do we need this? Like, why don't you just not come? Why does Coach have to go? Honestly, I could see Coach doing a really amazing gothic moment, but we didn't do that. We did happy, cheery Selena Gomez selling to her millions of fucking Disney fans. Like, great. I don't want that. I don't care. Take that to Instagram. Take it to Selena Gomez's fucking millions of followers on Instagram. I don't care. Leave it away from the Met. Thank you. Next up is the Olsons, and honestly, I don't know how they dress Greta Gerwig so good, but like, they look like a fucking mess. I mean, normally they don't look really great, but like this year especially, like I don't know which one's which, but one of them looks awful and the other one looks boring. So, you know, pick and choose which one you think is which and like whichever one is awful and whichever one is boring, but like, I, I don't have time for this, thanks. Next up is Madonna and Jean-Paul Gaultier. Honestly, I was kind of expecting Madonna to like turn out an amazing look. After last year's camo disaster, I probably should have like, you know, actually thought about this, but I thought, oh, well her name's Madonna. Maybe she'd actually like do something interesting, but I guess not. The top is fine, I guess. You know, it's there, but like, what's with that dress? And then like, honestly, can you see the fucking seam? Like, I can see the seam. Like, it looks undone, it looks really shoddy. She doesn't look that great either. Like, it's all just a mess. Like, Jean-Paul Gaultier is meant to be like killing this whole game. Like, he's in the entirety of the gala. Like, why is this look literally so bad? Like, why is there only one Jean-Paul Gaultier look too? Like, 
I need somebody to help me understand what is happening this year. Next up is Gigi Hadid. She's wearing Versace, and honestly, she said that she was meant to look like stained glass. Um, she looked like stained ass. So here's the thing. It looks like you're wearing fucking like stalagmites and stalactites. Like you don't look like you're in a fucking stained window. Like there's nothing, what? What are you talking about? You look like you're in a cave. That's what I'm getting. I'm getting rhinestone cave, gigantic gems that white people are gonna crack and then buy and then sell in a store for $5 million. Like that's what I'm getting. Like I'm not getting this stained glass vibe cause that's bullshit. Thanks. Next up is Jared Leto and Gucci. And honestly, like he actually, Follow the theme, Alessandra McKaylee like did that, thank God. The only thing that really follows the theme is the little stole that he's wearing, but like priests wear that. So thank you for, I don't know, like looking past crosses and the Madonna for like inspiration. Like, thank you. Thank you, Alessandra. We appreciate that. Next up is Tessa Thompson. She's wearing Tom Brown. It's amazing. This is another great example of you not having to do all that much work to make this work. Like literally there is a cross in that dress made out of buttons. And like the dress is really simple. It's very Tom Brown. It's very recent of what he's doing, but he didn't do anything crazy. He put a cross right down the center in the fabric. Like it's not ridiculous. It's not over the top. It like, it's not that hard. So please like, let me know. Thank you, Tessa Thompson, for like not fucking this shit up. Next up is Kylie Jenner, and honestly, like what? Like why? Why is Alexander Wang invited to this fucking thing? Why is she there? Like why does she look like that? Like what, wh what was the theme that you got invited to? Fucking The Matrix? Like, cause that wasn't the one I heard of, and honestly, I don't know if you're reading anything that's going on in the world, but like, I'm pretty positive that this has nothing to do with heavenly bodies, fashion in the Catholic imagination barely has any imagination involved, so please let me know. And like, take off those fucking sunglasses. They're awful and dreadful and I hate them. <sighs> God, and Travis Scott looks stupid. I hated that. And you know what? Cardi B was pregnant and she still looks fucking fantastic, so I don't even wanna hear the I was pregnant excuse. That's bullshit. Next up is Nikki. And honestly, kind of disappointed in Nikki. She's wearing Oscar de la Renta. And I was like, you know what? Nikki has like outgrown that crazy phase that she had. Like, you know, she's grown. She's like very sexy, amazing, whatever. And then I watched the Chun Li video and I was like, oh, okay, so we're still doing like crazy here and there. So why couldn't we have done like something interesting? Like, I get red dress interesting red jesus blood hearts whatever fucking catholic reference you want to bullshit me with but this is just kind of meh like it's a it's a it's a dress in sequins with a gigantic tool cape like i i don't know i don't know what you want me to do because like this is bullshit this is boring this is tacky again take it with amanda Siegfried. you two can go fucking arm in arm in the back like go in the back thanks <sighs> Finally, somebody good, Cardi B, looks amazing. I love this. Her hair, fantastic. Not really feeling the headpiece all that much, but you know what, I will I will work it out. I love the dress. I kind of feel like it would have been better had there not been that gigantic silk train, but I will deal with it. I love the way that it's cut. Like, it goes around her belly, like she's pregnant, she looks amazing. And she's still sexy. Like she still has like a gigantic slit. She is not, you know, a tiny little woman like, she she did a good, she did a good job in this Moschino look. It's overall great. She's funny, she's amazing. Like, thank you, Cardi. We appreciate this because nobody else could get their shit together. Another moment I never thought I would say was that Dior Couture by Marie Grazia Curie would be one of the better looks of the Met Gala. Cara Delevingne is wearing Dior, Maria Grazia, you know, considering what else is going on, she like kind of turned it out. Like I'm into this, stained glass, no stained glass look. It's just very like sexy, religious, not really, but like you have to look at the, I don't know. It's just good. It's better. It's better than anything else we've ever seen from her. So you know what? I'm just taking it. I'm taking it. I'm running. I'm going. I'm having, I'm having a good time with it. Okay. Can you tell I'm having a good time with it? Thank God. Finally, we're at Zendaya. Let me just say that Zendaya looks fucking amazing. Like she looks so good. She is channeling Joan of Arc in Atelier Versace. And honestly, I think everybody else that's wearing Versace should be fucking upset that Donatella did not give them this look. She, this look is just like mixing costuming with actual fashion design in like the best way possible. I love the little chain mail. I love the armor. Like, I think it's beautiful. She looks 
angelic. The wig, my wig is snatched. She just took it, she dyed it. It's amazing, I'm in love. Overall, this is just beautiful. She looks amazing, like, she's done no wrong. Thank you, Zendaya, we don't deserve you. Next up is Kim. <sighs> Kim, again. The crosses, like what's going on? Why are we just putting crosses on things? Like, is that is that designed to you? Is that what we think? Like, I get that we like to sculpt our bodies for perfume, but like maybe we could do something better in a Versace. It's just boring. Like, I get it, you have a great body. Like, I've been hearing about it for the past 10 fucking years. So I'm good. Like, thanks, we get it. Like, why don't you do something interesting? Like, at least last year it was like boring as fuck, but like, it wasn't tacky. Like, this is just tacky. Like, this is just like, meh. And like I watched the Vogue Instagram video of like the Kardashian Jenner and I was like, oh, this is that disappointing one. Oh, okay. This is the worst one that I've seen. Like it was bad. Next up is Miss Shane Lee Woodley, Shane, Shane, whatever. I don't know. I just feel really bad for her. Cause like, I think she was channeling the Crusades and like not in a good way. Like, I don't know what's happening here. Like, and especially because Zendaya did the damn thing. Like, if I was Shane Lee Woodley, I would be like, oh shit, Zendaya looks so good. And like, I would be like, Nikki, Amanda, wait for me. And like, go in the back too. Like, yeah, this is like, no, like she needs help. Like somebody get her a stylist. Somebody get her somebody that likes her. Like parental intervention, intervention in general, sit her down, talk about her abuse, like fabrically abuse fabrically assaulted like there's a lot going on here we need to we need to get to the bottom of it next up is literally my queen solange knowles she is channeling black madonna in iris van herpen iris van herpen is literally one of the best couturiers in the entire world she is amazing and her work is beautiful solange is wearing archival so like obviously it's Solange so like she just won and then she's wearing archival Irish Van Herpen so that's like an extra two wins and then she's wearing a do-rag so that's like a fourth win and then her little headpiece is a fifth win like there's nothing that this woman can do that is wrong like even Rihanna was having she's not having a great time but like Solange killed it like Solange did it like Solange did the damn thing and like she never ever ever disappoints me ever so like Rihanna Watch out, bitch, cause Solange fucking killed it. Like, honestly, I was so upset about this entire thing and then I saw Solange's post on Instagram and I was just like, that is my fucking savior. Like, honestly, Solange like died for all of our sins. Like she did, she died for us and we should be fucking grateful. Next up is Amelia Clark. Khaleesi, honestly, like not getting a fair shake. Like we need to get her out of that Dolce contract because that shit's not doing any good for her. I mean, she might be getting money from it, but like Khaleesi, no. Khaleesi, breaker of chains, mother of dragons, like, we need something good. Like, we need a moment. Like, we need something. And this Dolce & Gabbana, Sicilian Madonna shit, like, uh, I could fucking do without, thanks. Like, I'm good. Take your fucking cherubs over your vagina, send them away. I'm good, thank you. Next up, Winnie Harlow. Did not follow the theme at all, but I love it. Like, I'm so good. I assume maybe it's like a bridal thing. I don't know. But I just think she looks really, really beautiful. I love the dress. I think it's amazing. The headpiece I could do without, but besides from that, solid, good, sold. Thank you. Sarah Paulson in Prada. Like, rude. Muchia, Muchia, what are we doing? Like, we need an intervention. We need to talk. We need to, like, text. We need to FaceTime. I don't really know, but, like... Yuchia, you could have done so fucking much with this this theme. Like, you could have done it all. Like, you could have owned this shit and like, we got that. We got that. Like, who made that? Because I'm, I, I don't want to believe it's Prada because I really just genuinely don't believe that that could have ever come out of anything that has to do with Prada. Like, it, it looks like bad Versace or bad Dolce & Gabbana. Like, sad. Next up is Tiffany Haddish. She didn't follow the theme, but I think she looks really beautiful and I love it and I'm proud. Next up is Aman Hamam and Zach Posen. Great, thank you, amazing, Zach. The rest of your looks, no. But this is beautiful. I don't know exactly what the inspiration is, but it looks Catholic, it looks good, and I mean, Zach's Jewish, so like, checkpoint, checkpoint, like, it's solid. I'm here, I'm down, Amon looks beautiful. I love this dress, thank you. And finally, Lana Del Rey. She's wearing Gucci, I love this. It's based on 
Our Lady of Sorrows, which is a little Virgin Mary reference from Alessandra Michele. I love the headpiece. I love the swords and the hearts. I love the embroidery on the dress. Like, it's all good. She's solid. She sold me. I'm, I'm here. I'm queer. I'm living. Please, please, Lana Del Rey, hate the sin, but love the sinner. Please, because, like, I'm here. I'm queer. I need, I need you to take care of me. Thank you. Okay, I'm so sorry that this was an awful Met Gala. I apologize. I wish there was something I could say, but there's nothing. I have nothing left in me to give. I'm gonna have a mental breakdown. Do you see how pale I am? Like I was in the sun yesterday and like now I'm pale as fuck and it's sad and I blame everyone. So please let me know what your favorite looks from the Met Gala were. There weren't many to choose from, so yeah. I will see you guys in the next video and TTYL.